You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. I'll be back. This is Sparta! You know, I have one simple request. And that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Now, evidently, my cycloptic colleague informs me that that can't be done. Uh, can you remind me what I pay you people for? Honestly, throw me a bone here. Ah, the movies. A chance to escape, relax, and let the imagination take you into the story. Whether you are a Jedi in a galaxy far, far away, a pirate on the Caribbean, or an archaeologist fighting off mummies, movies give us that freedom to escape from our reality for those few hours and immerse ourselves into the many different worlds and situations that we either fantasize or can relate to. Now, there are many different ways one can view a movie, especially with films being online in a matter of days since their release. And every way we view a film impacts how we enjoy a movie. The movie theater is just one way to view a film, and they strive to immerse you into the movie in hopes to take your night and, of course, some of your pocket change. But how have they been able to keep this up? With the film industry constantly changing, such as better effects, better picture quality, and so on, and the movies being at your fingertips wherever you go with things like Netflix, video phones, and streaming on the internet, one would think that movie theaters would slowly be fading away into nothing. But surprisingly, that's not the case. If anything, the number of movie theaters has been growing, especially in the Tri-City area. But the question is, how has the theater changed in attempts to maintain business and visitors to the theater? I visited a local theater to find out. So where to begin in this theater where excitement meets calm? I know, a bit of an oxymoron, but the building says, come in, relax, and enjoy your movie. But the atmosphere is just teeming with excitement. Couples wait to get their tickets, children, running through the arcade and of course the lobby just swelling with smells of popping popcorn. I decided to begin my quest for answers with the most logical place, the concession stand. It's the first place that the guests visit, so I supposed I should too. That and I was a little hungry. So I sat down with Agnes, the food service manager at the local Empire Theatres, and asked what she thought about the industry and some of its more recent changes to better the experience for the guest and keep the business alive. I've been in the theater industry about 14 years and I've been the food service manager for about six. The changes that's happened was we have an actual recipe to our popcorn, which uh, years back we didn't, so every theater did a different recipe. So the dotted popcorn wasn't uh, exclusive, let's say, to Empire Theatres or Famous Players. Um, also, we've added uh, new things like uh, a pizza pizza uh, at our theater. Uh, new York Fries does uh, uh, the best, uh, not compared to popcorn sales, but compared to any other foods that we have, like pizza pizza, New York Fries, uh, hot dogs, and nachos. Um, the nice thing is uh, we did a uh, renovation at our theater uh, from the circular uh, a concession in the past to a full concession where everything is at one, uh, uh, one transaction so everybody can buy a ticket, anybody can buy anything on concession just one time instead of going to different locations for any other foods. It's great that you can buy everything all at the same time in the same place. But you really begin to realize how expensive a trip to the movies can be when you pay for everything all at once. I inquired to why all the prices seemed so high. Um, concession revenue is mainly 
is what our theater lives on. Everybody thinks that uh, we live on the tickets, the ticket sales and everything. It's not true. Ticket sales for about two to six weeks, the distributors get all the sales. So our theater has to survive on the concession sales. A lot of people say that our food is expensive, which if you compare to other things like um, if you go to the carnival or if you go to a circus or even to a rangers game, our foods are a lot better in price than there. And I get that they're one-time deal, but people are not going to the theater every day. They go on a special occasion or if a movie comes out that they like. Uh, if we have to uh, go up in prices is our inventory, our product, if it goes up. So as the Empire is not the biggest uh, theater company in Canada, but they're trying not to uh, have outrageous prices. Sadly, we probably won't be seeing any decreases in pricing, so be prepared to bring your wallets when you do go. But what about that lineup? Personally, when I see a huge line, I must admit I am a little turned off to even buying anything. But my taste buds tell me to go regardless. So my question was, how has the theater business changed to speed up their services to potential guests like me or you? Was there something specific that they utilized to speed things up? Definitely, especially with the um, banker's line, that's definitely improved. You can serve if you have enough staff. Uh, with the, we try to serve within five minutes. When you enter the line, within five minutes, you're, the guest should uh, have somebody in front of them serving them. Um, a lot of people thought the banker's line wasn't a good choice because then the guest has to be in that line instead of choosing their own line. But we've had the banker's line for about two and a half years. And let's say that our speed of service went from at least 65 seconds to under 55 right now. So it's improved a lot. Uh, I wasn't a true believer of the banker's line, but it has proved me wrong and I really enjoy it. 10 seconds doesn't really seem like a big difference, but Agnes assured me that when you're in that line, it makes a huge difference. Well, I'm still not completely satisfied. So I asked her what else her company was trying to do to improve on wait times and how the concession stand was developing for the future. One of our theaters that we just opened, um, it's self-serve. Everything is self-serve. So they kind of just go through like a cafeteria line and you pick whatever and then at the end you get the cashier to bring everything in and that's actually been wor working really well. Uh, I see, I don't know about our theater, but I see uh, we have a theater opening next year in Ottawa. They're serving booths. So they're going to the extra long that they're going to have special service with uh, alcohol and everything. If new product comes in, we definitely look at it and see if it's a good idea to get a contract with that. But I think that pretzels, pizza, New York fries, and TCBY, hot dogs, nachos, they're always going to stay at the theater. The idea of a self-serve concession intrigued me. I like the concept of helping myself to what I want, and I know I can't be alone in that thought. I inquired if we would ever see any kind of healthy choices in our theaters anytime soon. On some locations, you do have healthier choices or let's say not meat product. For example, for uh, in one of our theaters in Square One, they serve veggies because they have a lot of the Arab population that cannot have meat, especially pork. So they get the veggies. It depends on the area where you live. If they do a survey and you know what, you have a lot of people that want the veggies, the, the uh, uh, Empire Theaters will introduce veggies. Kind of look at upon where we live, the demographic, and see what we could bring into the theater to actually make more sales. We're all about making sales. Okay, so clearly the concession aspect of a theater has been developing as best it can to keep up with today's market. But what about the other aspects of the theater? For that, I talked with Chris, the operations manager from the same theater. He shared his thoughts on the vastly growing and developing theater business. I would say that the industry itself um, in movies and specifically the theater have been sort of 
gearing more towards a one-stop shop, so there's theaters now coming with um, you know, liquor licenses and restaurants and all of those sorts of things to try to offer different types of food to satisfy different appetites. So it's more of um, we want your night out a week if it's only one night or two nights to be all in one place. The development of this specific theater I've seen, uh, well structural development obviously when we added IMAX to the building, um, bringing in uh, a lot of different crowd. As far as the things that we offer here, we started down with the festival that we just had Grand River Film Festival a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's a huge community project and, a, and it's sort of a different line than we've been used to at this theater. Um, well, we also implemented a, a few new guest strategies as far as um, in theater kind of priorities where we're checking up on guests, where we're doing uh, or different, different focus on um, satisfaction of a guest while they're in the theater, uh, specifically in their seats, not necessarily just at concession lines. Um, you know, we have our Empire Extra at Waterloo and a couple of theaters as well, which is a higher quality picture, as well as sound, we're offering 7.1 um, surround sound. So, um, especially with IMAX, the draw is for you know the the technology age. So, the best looking picture, the best looking sound, or the best sound. The technology age, indeed. With such a leap in technological development, it only makes sense to utilize it and to appeal to the demographic who follows these developments. And what kind of developments have there been? The first thing on my mind was the sudden surge of 3D movies. I asked how that has affected the business. So financially, I think the, the money we bring in makes more than the money it costs to actually change it over to, to 3D. Um, so that's a huge thing. Um, and it's a, different, it's a different type of movie again. So it, now you see them re-releasing even Disney movies, Lion King. And, things like that. And I think the 3D definitely, well, there are a group of people that nostalgia sets in and they just think, you know, this is too much, this isn't what I want to see, but I think the newer crowd coming up, the 3D televisions and all these sorts of things, um, it's a different depth. I remember the first time I saw Avatar in 3D, it blew my mind. So it's it's a whole different experience and I think again going back to that we want your whole night, it's, it's definitely helping theater I would say. And what about the feasibility of having a theater that serves alcohol? It's looking like that's the next big thing in the industry, with more and more theaters popping up with 19 plus sections. Chris told me how he thinks it would work and where the industry as a whole is headed. It's exactly what people think they're looking for uh, until they enjoy the experience. Uh, I think it's gonna be very limited to the people who will go. I think it's a great idea, a one-stop shop sort of idea again, but to have someone constantly interrupting my movie. It's not something I'm looking forward to. Uh, I think you hear a lot of uh, people saying that the movies, the theater, is, is slowly gonna fade away as people start to get, you know, more convenient at home, they can order a movie off the TV or their phone. And I think to a point, or maybe over the next few years, we'll see a little bit of decline, but at some point people are gonna get bored of being at home and they're gonna wanna go up. Knowing that a lot of our demographic is drastically changing faster with technology than we could ever imagine. Um, I think we'll do alright. Alright? I think that's a bit of an understatement. At least that's my opinion as a movie lover. Which brings up the question, how has the way we view a movie changed? Arguably, we spend 90% of our time or more in the theater watching the movie. So how has it developed, especially in the technology age? For this, I spoke with Sarah, a supervisor and projectionist. At the theatre, we have all digital, so there's no longer a need for projectionists like me. Because with the digital, the com it basically a computer system runs all of our projectors, turns them on when they need to start, plays through and turns them off at the end, which is what we used to do. And projectionists, when there was film, we would also make up the movies. Whereas now it's uh, a hard drive, so you just download it. So you don't need as many man hours upstairs in the booth. With the digital, like the picture is better. It's a crisper picture, you're not gonna get the scratches that you would have gotten with film. And you have the option of 3D now. Whereas with film, yeah, yes, you could get the scratches and there were issues with it, but the way I look at it is there was a lot more manual fixes if a problem occurred when we were with film as opposed to now with the digital, because it's a computer, you basically have to reboot it. You don't have as many just quick fixes. From film to digital projection, allowing for crisper picture and bigger sound, the ability to do 3D movies, self-serve concession stands, healthier options, 
and even the addition of 19 plus theaters. The theater business is ever changing to stay current and grab audiences. And let's face it, so long as there are movies being made, the theater will be there to deliver the best possible experience. And I, for one, will be there to enjoy every minute of it. And of course, the popcorn. A special thanks to Agnes Cho, Chris Verbakel, Sarah Loveday, and Empire Theaters for participating in this documentary. For CJIQ, I'm Nick Fate.